I grew up in the 50s and 60s, and among many things that that period was known for was home-cooked food, food that was an indispensable staple of family life. As children, we were treated with tasty, wholesome, and nutritious meals that weren't cooked by paid chefs, but by loving mothers and grandmothers whose love made the meals taste all that much better. And restaurants, they're rarely visited, usually on birthdays or anniversaries. That tradition of home cooking has remained with me to this very day. You know, when I became a young monk, one of the first things I was taught, along with studying and practicing meditation, was how to cook. We were taught what food was, where it came from, what was in it, which ingredients went together, and which didn't. I still occasionally get behind the stove and help prepare a mouth-watering vegetarian feast of lentils, vegetables, and this delicious Indian bread called puri. It's used to scoop up other preparations. It's a real shame that today, only 30% of Americans eat a home-cooked meal daily. More and more millennials rely on ready-made meals, restaurants, and takeaways. It's no wonder people ask me, as a vegetarian, what do you eat? Where do you get your protein from? It's obvious that this age of so-called convenience has drastically reduced what we know and understand about food. But the worst of all, we have lost the very soul of the home. No wonder that the body of the family unit is breaking up. What to do? Light the fire on your stove. And if you're one of those people who doesn't have time to get into the kitchen daily, all right, then start with what's manageable. Prepare just one meal a week for you and your family, which doesn't harm those beautiful animals, yourself or the environment, and which is cheaper than a meat-based meal, and it's full of protein, fiber, calcium, and vitamins, everything our bodies need. By eating at home, you benefit from good company, conversation and laughter. It's an opportunity to bond with family, to build and maintain relationships. It's said that the people who give you their food, give you their hearts. You know, grains, vegetables and spices don't grow on store shelves. The magical ingredients which become our meal have a journey. And our meal takes on a magical taste when we acknowledge where those ingredients came from. There are many things newer generations are letting go of, but cooking shouldn't be one of them.